I guess it's Burn Bridges Day or something. <laughs> um, whatever. Fuck these cunts. Um, excuse my French. Um, yeah, you know, Samari and the Fed, uh, 82 guy. You know, you know have a Fed guy? You know what? Your name fucking sucks. I sort of choke on it because it's so fucking gay. Alright, it's like saying, gay, 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 82. Alright? So that's not my fault that I'm just conditioned where saying, fed, alright, makes me want to fucking puke. Alright? So, you could have had just fed a guy, and we could have just left it at that. But instead, nah, let's just do it this way instead. God, you people are such fucking pricks, you quote mining, motherfucking, editing, bitch fucking bastards. All right, now to derived energy first. All right, um, fuck you. You make a fucking three-minute video and half of it's about your fucking hero, your child-molesting fucking hero. Fuck you. All right, you're a fucking creepy motherfucker. All right, if somebody made a video defending O.J. Simpson, I'd say, you know what? You're too stupid for me to associate with. You're just too fucking stupid. And guess what? You're too fucking stupid if you think the American justice system works on celebrities. Look up O.J. Simpson. Look up Robert Blake. All right? And then grow a fucking brain and shove it up your ass. So, I mean, I guess I'm going to make a video response. Nah, it's not a video response. It's a fucking hatchet job. Piece of shit. Um, I'm going to respond to a video titled In Mendem vs. DE. It's going to be my first response to In Mendem, so <sighs> let's see what happens. Um, yeah, Mendem ain't going to like it, I don't think. I don't think he's going to like it. That's, yeah. Um, in this video, a large majority of it was focused on an interview that I did, that I had done with uh, Fidea82. And it, it was a long interview. I guess I missed this one. Interview, but I know a lot of people didn't watch this interview. They were able to just watch this video and interpret in this video what was given as our conversation as our conversation. And I, if you want to watch the video, I'm not going to say it's great, but yeah, it's different than this video. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to give some clarification. Yeah, this and isn't going to be, this isn't going to be clarification. I'm sorry. See, I played already two minutes of this video. This wasn't clarification. This was bullshit. You said some things in very inarticulate, lazy, sloppy ways. And now you're going to sit there and try to change the truth? Well, fuck that. Address some points that I was concerned with in this video. So, here we go. So, on to the fifth hand of the day guy. <laughs> in Samari interview. Um, <laughs> yeah. Alright, so they, they covered a few issues, but there were several issues, by the way. No. You might, I, I mean, I just, I, you know, I can't even describe how stupid it is. A few versus several? And you're bitching somehow? What, I was supposed to itemize how many issues you talked about in your stupid jackass, frivolous, cunt bullshit fuck video thing? Alright? Yeah, so you touched on a couple of issues that actually matter to the universe, and the rest of it was just a bunch of fucking bullshit. And so I think I was even giving you some fucking benefit of the doubt by saying you actually talked about something I might have given a fuck about. I fear, but I guess you will only cover those issues that you disagree with. Uh, well, I guess I'd only cover the issues that, yeah, I thought mattered, okay? Where you said something like, holy shit, that was stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And Feb the, 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 the guy? What the fuck? Don't you know how to read? Fedea 82. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. I mean, I'm sorry that, you know, Spanish names, like you name yourself Jesus or some other kind of bullshit, and like nobody says, oh yeah, that makes sense. All right? And guess what? I've never had to say the word Fedea. I've never in my fucking life said it. I don't even say feta cheese. I won't even say things like quiche. Ew. I mean, my sphincter shrivels up. You mean the, the, the dumb guy? That's fine. I love it. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Please, do some more of that. I, I, it's a fucking kicks ass. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you patronizing fuck.
feminism. Okay, they, they brought up feminism. That's what the guy did. And uh, they both sort of just ragged on the idea of it. Like, well, I'm for, you know, all humans having equal rights and all this kind of crap. Um, what's... Uh, okay, so this is the interview. This is their fucking quote. Do you consider yourself a feminist or a masculist or anything like that? A feminist or a masculist? I mean, you know, on, on, right on its face. All right, that's like saying, do you consider yourself a defender of Holocaust victims or fucking Nazis? No, I don't. Like, from what I see, and I will concede, I haven't read for 10 years about feminism. Well, I <laughs> read for 10, so you have to read for 10 years about a subject like feminism. So if you, like, if there was a proposal to flee, free the slaves, i, I, I got to read for 10 years. I can't really quite figure that one out. All right? I mean, come on. So, so there's your life as a, as a woman has been so simple and so clear-cut and you don't have any fucking personal knowledge of anybody who, any woman who's been totally fucked, okay, by, by any kind of male hierarchy in terms of getting half the pay. Um, and you don't, you haven't even heard of any, like, statistics or any kind of crap like that. No. You gotta read up on it. I think I, I haven't spent the time, but... As far as I can see, it's unfair to either sex to advocate for one side. <laughs> I mean, advocate for one side. Yeah, so if you're advocating for the Jews in that Nazi Jew situation, you, you're a fucking idiot. You know, uh, I mean, this is just so stupid. I think we should be looking at equality for both sexes. Oh, duh. And don't you think that's what feminists want? is equality. They want the same rights and opportunities that males get. And they don't want to be treated like a woman first. They want to be treated like a human being first. A human being that might be capable of lifting 150 pounds or might be capable of running fast enough to the fire. For all genders, um, everybody, everybody should be seen as equal in the law. Again, this in now fede a guy, you can't figure out that this implies that feminists are act, asking for something other than equality. That there's some other agenda of a feminist besides equality. You can't figure out how this implies they're asking for something else. The society, everybody. People aren't feminists because they want women to have double rights. I mean, it's just stupid. <clears throat> yeah, a stupid, stupid straw man. Yeah, right. So it's a straw man to sit there and listen to what you goddamn say, say it's really said it badly, and you're going to call that a straw man. You're not going to concede the simple point. You said it badly. Quote us. Quote us. I play... Well, no, I don't have to play it now. See, I, I quoted you quite accurately. Your own fucking video testifies to exactly what I said. Okay? That you implied that women are asking for something other than exactly what you stated you were for. Women are exactly asking for what they've been denied, which is fairness, you stupid, dumb cunt. Please. Where... Did we say that? What is this crap? Well, where did you say it? In the or in your very own quotes that you mined out of your own fucking video, you fucking stupid bastard. I mean, people are feminists because women... You're going to go over it again? You've already lost so fucking... I mean, goddamn, you're, you're nuked and the fucking little radioactive squirmy charcoal worms are now fucking going to go over it again? ...have been um, imposed upon by tradition uh, that has subjugated them. Now, I understand that, um, you know, women are subjected to, to things that perhaps now they're on a hierarchy, they are lower down in terms of discrimination. They're discriminated against more easily or, you know, kind of... 
Exo Samari, this is your video response. Hmm. Um, so dignity is more easily upset than I think they're more vulnerable to it, I would say, in general, based on their history and just the, the circumstance of being, you know, being weaker and all of that, you know. This isn't a straw man at all? I mean, you got fucking heroin shirts uh, doing the, my, my side of the argument? Thank you. Yeah, we, I think that all people can agree that uh, women have been abused constantly by men throughout history. Oh, well, maybe you could have said that in your fucking video. And uh, also they have always been on the downside of the law. The law has, ne has never, the law have never protected women before. They're fighting for their equal rights. So you're a feminist as long as you believe that women haven't acquired equal rights. So unless you think women have, um, don't, don't face any obstacles or impairments or infirmities of um, classical traditional thought, <laughs> the thought police that is out there. I see all around me respect for... Wow, you could have let me finish. Fuck the sentence. Then, I was, the then was coming. Thens are always kind of important. Like when thens are going to happen, or buts, or therefores. Those are like the big statements. Those are the ones that maybe you shouldn't mine out of a video. Women. That's the rule now. It's not the exception. So we have to fight for individual cases where the exception is occurring. Ah, oh, let's do this one again. Let's do this one again. I see all around me respect for women. That's the rule now. It's not the exception. So we have to fight for individual cases. Uh, okay, so in his country, I guess, in Venezuela, it's the rule that women aren't you know, molested on the train. Um, you know, that women have no problem walking the street at night. Okay, they don't have to have escorts, they don't have to go out in gangs. Um, I mean, no problem whatsoever. And when it comes to being paid, you know, if the woman's the maitre d' at the restaurant, she gets just as much money as the man. The exception is occurring. Yes, I am for equal rights for all, for both genders, for all sexes, for all identities. Well, again, explain to me how feminists aren't. Explain to me how, how that's not the rule, okay? It's the rule that feminists, m most feminists, okay, will just have to do the, 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 ex the exceptions, okay? Let's go find the exception feminists who want too much, and we'll go give them a good little finger wagging, all right? <laughs> All of humanity shall have equal rights, uh, and this is what I argue for, and this is what I fight for, and this is what I believe. Yeah, well, then you're a feminist, and you could have just said, yeah, I'm a feminist, okay? I'm an activist for all people, trying to strive to be everything they can be, or something else like that. But no, you didn't say anything eloquent, and you didn't state it very well. You said it really badly and shabbily, and you implied that feminists are stupid, ignorant um, old haggy bitches who are just whining for extra. That's what you did. So, bravo. This Your video, your original interview was a hatchet job. This is a hatchet job. Bravo. And this is a core part of me. I'm not willing to marginalize myself and to say, no, I am a feminist because I am for women's rights. No, I am for everybody's fucking yeah, whatever. Like I said, everybody's fucking rights in the context of a battle between men and women. So, yeah, I'm for the Nazis' free expression to be racist cunts and to do everything they can short of, well, short of putting them in concentration camps. Yeah, they can't do that. I mean, this is stupid. You don't fight in defense of the... You can't fight in the struggle if you're saying, you know, well, gee, you know, they have a point. <laughs> I mean, come on. Right. And yes, men are discriminated against. And yes, men are imposed by generalizations of their gender. 
there. Yeah, right. In some way that what? There's some other possible. There's some other possible fucking outcome. It always has though. Those only those issues only come down to where there's just no other rational recourse. Just none. I mean, you know, unless you want to do something incredibly preposterously expensive, you know, like create two separate armies or, um, you know, pretend there isn't gender differences, physical gender differences, um, that create a, a, a biological disposition. Um, but again, like, so, so yeah, let's just make all the systems maybe 50 times more expensive as we try to filter out these things. Uh, you know, come on. And again, it's just about the hard discrimination. If you get rid of the worst of it, like the equal pay kind of ideas, then, yeah, uh, then that's at least some kind of real playing field. So, so if you believe that women haven't quite achieved that yet, then it's reasonable to call yourself a feminist. If you think everything's just fine, well, then you could say, it's time to eject myself from the word or eject myself from the concept. But to argue that men need to fight for their rights, that they have some sort of equal struggle, is just fucking idiotic. I think we should be looking at equality for both sexes, for all genders. Um, everybody. Everybody should be seen as equal in the law, in the society. Everybody. I agree. I, think uh, I mean, this is just so nothing. Again, again, why do you think feminism exists? It doesn't exist because, oh, well, there's this little problem you know, between the sexes kind of thing. No, there was a big, giant problem between the sexes. Women didn't vote. I mean, come on, a hundred years ago. I mean, it's, it's, you know, there are some obscenities here. Uh, it's like fighting for blacks' rights or whites' rights, in my opinion. It's like it's old-fashioned, in a way. I mean, there's no reason not to fight for everybody's rights. And, um, well, is that because uh, isn't that while, the purpose? While, while I agree that there are genetic and natural differences between the genders... Yeah, okay, so why don't you just say you think things are good enough? So you're not a feminist anymore. Fine. Just say you think it's okay. The law is close enough. The and the, and the uh, practical outcomes are close enough. Women are liberated enough. Okay. That yeah, you know, we have enough laws against uh, crimes against women. Um, the the pun the 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 punishments are high enough to prevent um um, you know the 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 crimes. They can walk down the street and. Be comfortable. Uh, we can attend. The, we can attend the specific. Yeah, you know, they can apply for a job, and they don't have to worry about that little slimy, you know, couch thing. No, that doesn't happen anymore. I'm sure that doesn't happen anymore. Cases, you know what I mean? You don't yeah. have to call yourself this or that in order to be fair. Um, yeah, then they talked about... <laughs> yes, yeah, so again, so, so that's all you had to do. All you got to do is fine. We, we, gotta, we get it. You think it's good enough. Fine. I don't think it's good enough. The sex trade subject, which is another, you know, it's just a little bit, you know, you got to be a little careful where you're treading here. And uh, so, again, it was the conversation was basically... Well, do what you feel like, and if people feel like it, and they, it's consenting adults, and blah, 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 like somehow you can create a, you know, Samari basically said that, oh, well, you know, if you give them a pension program, and a, a, you know, 401k, and a, you know, sick leave, and vacation days, then everything's going to be okay, because, you know, you'll organize this whole trade. Well, guess what? You can't do any of that. All right. If you don't, uh, if you, if you can't stop people from selling it on the street, where you have the same labor rights as any other person in the Western world, you work proper hours. You work regulated hours. You make a regulated wage. You're in a safe environment. Are you really trying to imply that to try to institute? Yeah, I'm trying to imply that. Guess what? There's things called unions, right? And how do unions fail? Unions fail if they can't keep the scabs off the street. 
if they can't keep the scabs from showing up to the employer and saying, hey, guess what? You don't got to pay any of that bullshit. I'll do the job for one quarter of the price. Right? So unless you have some policy to stop the scabs from selling it on the street, all right, at one-tenth the price, yeah, your system wasn't working. I just said that in my video. If you play my whole video, maybe you'd hear that. But that's the argument. So argue the argument. Don't argue your straw man. Something like this would be a waste of time or would not help in the slightest. Again, I will argue that. Yeah, yeah, they have it in the slightest, okay? We have this stupid whatever it is, this legalized prostitution in, in, in the silly city in America. All right? Yeah, and it has nothing to do with reality. It has to do with tourism. All right? And that's not going to be prostitution in New York City streets. It's not going to be prostitution on the streets of L.A. This industry is here whether we like it or not. It will always occur. So the best we could do... Well, well guess what? It can occur a lot or it can occur a little. And based on what the law says, it's going to decide whether it occurs a lot or whether it occurs a little. Um, and unless you do it right, you know, unless you can control it, um, yeah, you got to be careful. Because you're opening the door to a lot of wrecked marriages and a lot of spread diseases. It does make it comfortable for those who wish to do it, those who choose to do it. That's all I was saying. Oh, yeah, they're right. <laughs> yeah, again, uh, choose to do something that creates jeopardy for, you know, kids, little girls. Again, now we're back to the feminism issue, right? I mean, men aren't extorted out of their sexuality. Men aren't extorted into um, ruining themselves before they've even started their life. To die. And uh, there seems to be an awful lot of effort to qualify that people shouldn't die by mistake, you know. I think we absolutely have that right, but I think we need to really go in depth um, on it. I think that you should have the right, but you need to be in the right frame of mind as well. Um, a lot of well, keep people... Going. Especially I mean, they didn't label this. This is her old interview again. So we talked about depress depression. You could be really depressed, and really in a bad state, and just want out. You just don't want to deal with everything on your plate. And I, I don't think that would be fair for the, whatever we'll say, the the infrastructure that we would have in place hopefully at that time to be able to allow you to make that decision in that frame of mind in that state you know I think we would have really need to do analysis to have a bit of um, a time frame that yeah well the, the premise of your argument once again is unbenitarian so I guess I'll argue at least from that minimum state that this is kind of like you're saying that somehow people well, if you go wacky, you won't appreciate that you're not at your normal cockroach performance, where you're desiring a bunch of shit you don't really need and consuming a bunch of other people in the world to get it. Um, the, the basic human state is asshole, and even if somebody's a deluded fucknut, um, so what? <laughs> yeah, if they want to die, that's good. I mean, if if they can, if you can get them to walk over the the, the, you know, um, graceful exit cliff, fine. Who, what's the harm? How's that possibly a harm? That you would have to, I don't know, do some tests, do some really intense thoughts, really think it over before you can make that decision. I don't think it should be like a tattoo shop. You just go in and do it, and then it's done. No, I think you really need to. You agree that there should be that there should be obligatory, like for for example, when you apply for a visa, there are some okay. you know paperwork and, and a lot of you can even be questioned about your motives. You, you think yeah. there should be something similar in these regards because it's also a delicate uh, activity. Yeah, well, if you don't have kids or you haven't created a responsibility, it's not a delicate activity. 
And even when you have kids, if you have had kids in some traditional sense and you have a partnered relationship and all that other stuff, well, then, you know, the partner can pick up the slack. Um, it just seems, why should you impose the burden that anybody say anything other than, I want to live? If they can't say it, if they can't say it, maintain it, then why should they? It's not that hard to say. I mean, really, it's too big a game to say, I can sail the boat. You know? I mean, if you have some doubt that you can't sail the boat, you shouldn't be sailing the boat. So if there's any kind of weak moment where you say, I really don't think I could do this, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Honestly, I really do think so. Because I think a lot of us are just... would so easily throw everything away without giving it a second thought. I think once you have that second thought, once you have that clarity, go for it. Because there is no crime in somebody dying prematurely. Well, you're pretty, no... you're, you're pretty much saying you're not going to let somebody go for it if they have the clarity. You're going to say, no, you have to do jump through our hurdles. And you know if there's going to be hurdles, the hurdles are going to be preposterous. The, the hurdles are going to be unsus, uh, unsatisfiable. If, as soon as they start, as soon as we allow society to start building its hoops, its hoops are going to be, you know... Just not, it's going to be, you know, camel and eye of the needle kind of shit. This thing is dying prematurely. <laughs> I mean, it really isn't. What about an act like murder of an adult, a child? That wouldn't be constituted as a premature death? What about. No. I mean, realistically, I guess if you want to get gross about it. Okay, it's a violation of a social contract, all right? But as a practical matter, you know, if you understand that, you know, well, human life could be five years long by nature alone. It could be 10 years long. It could be 500 years long. What's the difference? It's all qualitatively pretty much the same substance, okay? You eat, you shit, you sleep. Um, you have your little silly ambitions, you chase your little bullshit, and that goes on and on and on for 90 years, uh, if you're lucky or whatever, right? If you're lucky, they say, um, if you're physically strong. Um, but that's all it is. You're going to die anyway. If somebody takes you out quickly at any one moment, well, I mean, it is kind of hard to describe exactly what the harm is. Like, exactly what's the harm? Oh, you... There's a few cows who aren't going to be imprisoned to, to satisfy your need to, to eat them, or you're not going to be abusive in the relationship you're in, and that person's going to be actualized, and she'll find a new person to be with, and that person will make her feel so fucking good. So, yeah, I mean, I could, I could, I could, I could blueprint almost any human life and say it consumes more than it produces. It's only the exceptional human beings who, who are afforded the opportunity to have a life where they actually are, um, you know, where they produce more than they consume. It's just the imbalance of the way it works out. There's very few, just turns out that way. Even though other people are trying to be good gift givers, there's only a few people that manage to give a good gift. I think you even mentioned later on in this video a drunk driver killing somebody prematurely, <laughs> running over a pedestrian. That's a premature death. Again, it's we're talking the difference between, you know, we're not talking about social law at that moment. We're talking about a ph philosophical perspective. All right? And so we're talking about life and death issues. You kind of got to start sooner or later putting on the phil philosopher's hat and not the social justice kind of hat or the social some other blah, blah, blah. And so I'm just saying that that's sort of the foundation of the argument is, is that we, as a practical matter, know that pre preserving somebody's will to live would be kind of a nonsense notion. That the notion is to just optimize decision-making one way or the other, and we probably agree on that. But again, my video was about things not said very well and things that could have been said better. That was what my video was saying. Not that I disagree with the substance of what you're saying. I was disagreeing with the poor way it was said. Um, an accidental death. The amusement park. The ride fails. That's a premature death. Yeah, if you have kids, you have an obligation, all that kind of crap. 
But even in that circumstance, what's the point of somebody living who doesn't really want to live? If your passion wanes so easily, if you can just fall into some little flighty thought of killing yourself, well, then you're really not here. I mean, you're really not playing the game the way it needs to be played if you're going to be raising kids. You know, I mean, that's just really bogus. You really shouldn't be raising kids if you have bouts of, um, you know, jumping into the fucking garage uh, with the exhaust pipe in your face. Um, yeah, it's just not a very good role model. Suicidal lunatic. So I'd almost argue that kids are probably better off without such parents. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, first of all, what's the point of living if somebody really doesn't want to live? It depends on the situation. I, uh, yeah, well, I mean, what, what's, how, it depends on the situation. We know what the system says to that. It says one out of a hundred. We can make one of a, out of a hundred of them survive, so let's do it. And we'll inject all of them with drugs, and we'll throw them all into farce therapy, and we'll, you know, torture and torment them for years. I mean, come on, we know how that, because we saved one. I mean, we know how preposterous the social infrastructure is. Um, so, yeah, you can't give it any encouragement. I mean, the so social infrastructure somehow sees a difference between people who die in plane crashes and people who are run over by drunk drivers. Somehow our societies think one of those deaths means more. I could argue for myself that I have been in deep depression at times. It comes and goes. Today, I love my life. I'm awesome. I kick ass. <laughs> But some days I really don't feel that way. Some days I really feel like... Well, if you feel your life, right, then maybe we could just do that. You know, we could just ask people a simple question when they're 18 years old. And we could say, do you feel your philosophy or do you think your philosophy? And, and if they say, no, I feel my philosophy, then we could just say, yeah, we're not going to give you any rights because feelings are completely bullshit. All right. If you're living your life based on a feeling or how you feel, well, then, yeah, that's going to fail. So, yeah, we're going to give you a different set of rights. And then the people who, who say, no, I think my philosophy. And then we're going to say, okay, you, you can be trusted. Here's, here's your life keys. You make decisions for yourself and you invest in your own judgment. Thank you very much. That's a respect I'm demanding as a... Uh, yeah, I mean, what do we have? Maybe I need a word for the for the uh, death <laughs> deathicists. I'm a deathicist, all right. You know, I'm gonna fight for my right to fucking die without having any motherfucking asshole who is, frankly, plainly, um, <laughs> preposterously more ignorant than I am, tell me what life is. Fuck him. And I certainly don't want nobody feel in their life to tell me what my life is. If they're going to start a sentence with I feel about my life, well then, fuck that. It would just be easier to die. No matter who's depending on me, no matter... I have, I have a great man who loves me. Some days that doesn't matter. You know, and I, it's been like that before as well. I've had times... You know, I wouldn't, I'm not suicidal at all right now, but I can be extremely depressed at times. A couple of years ago, I was suicidal. I felt so. Well, again, that was sort of my point, though, is that this, if you're going to articulate on this subject, then maybe you ought to have some sort of idea about how you could construct some sort of infrastructure that would be able to screen for this. And that's why I have made past videos where I advocated for an infrastructure that would screen for this kind of thing, where you could basically say, I'll trust me, thank you very much, all right, when you're at your high. Um, and uh, you can establish for yourself how what confidence you have in yourself and just leave it at that because you really can't put it in somebody else's hands unless it's somebody else I get to put it in if you know let the law allow me to tell you who you go ask when I'm depressed or when you have some if you want to suspect my decision well yeah then you go ask the person I've established as my guardian a few times I would say specifically at least two times where if I had the right to die easily accessible to me, if I could just walk in, like I'm going to the store, and 
go say I'm going for a tattoo and I just go to the tattoo shop. I make an appointment, I go in, I get it done, it's done. You know, if I would have had that opportunity, I probably would have taken it at some point already in my life. Now, I... You know, by this logic, every drunk could say you can't have a law against drunk driving because when I'm drunk, I can't figure out that drunk driving's wrong. I can't, I have no idea. Or some kind of bullshit like that. And we know better than that. I cannot justify that. I cannot justify giving in to those emotions, those feelings, because it would have drastically changed the lives of people in my life, as well for me think of what I've accomplished already, what I can accomplish with my life, how I can affect others and my impact on them, their impact on me. I've, I've been... You could, do the, you could do this backseat driving on anyone's life at any moment in their life, and it's just totally unfair. It's just totally unfair to sit there and say, well, look, there's a, there's a one million, you bought a lottery ticket. There's a there's a six million to one chance you you have a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, you have to live for that. Fuck you. Yeah, I, it's hard to talk about, but I've I've been impacted so much by other people here, um, as well as other places in my life, and I know that some people on YouTube in this group specifically have been suicidal in the past, but they. They didn't. They didn't die. And that might not be a good thing. I'm still here. Maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe I've wasted the last 40 years in this shithole. Okay? Then that's just the truth of it. That's a fucking goddamn fact. But the bottom line is it should be my decision, not society's decision. You know what? They're here and they inspire me. And I think they receive inspiration in others. I mean, Jack Kevorkian was pretty damn productive, in my opinion. I'm so glad he was around. Um, but he went through hell. He had a miserable, lousy time. And in the end, he might not have accomplished a motherfucking thing because the human race is stone-cold brain-dead. And that's just the truth. And part of me might say, I would like to give Jack a, a good rest at, at 17 years old. I'd like to lie him down in a comfy bed and let him have some peace. Instead of living a life where he has to watch people die miserably and horribly, and then he has to be an advocate and go through all this bullshit. All this fucking angst and anxiety and seven years in a fucking prison. And at times... Yeah, we're in a deep, dark spot, but we see that we can give our lives meaning. <laughs> well, look, the point is, is whose decision is it anyway, right? Whose life is it anyway? And what I'm saying is I just want the right to sign a piece of paper saying, I will take account for my depression, and I'll take an account for even a brain tumor. I don't care what I have. If there's any possibility that you can respect my judgment, respect my judgment. I certainly say, society, you have a right to keep me from driving your train. But you don't have a right to stop me from driving my life. Our actions. Through how we respond to others. So, yeah. I, I would argue that there can be different scenarios, of course. But I know in my life, if I had the right to nine years ago, I would have taken it. And I wouldn't have the life that I have now. There's no... Well, that's even worse than I thought. Oh, that's right. This is the new video. So, yeah. So, if that's going to be held as the standard, that's, you know, because you give people this liberty that a certain percentage of them are going to miss out on their sprinkly covered ice cream cone. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That, you know, that, but that's bullshit. That's not my responsibility. Now we're back to the feminist argument again. Why? Why? Because you silly people are... are, are um, flexible in something as fundamental as your enthusiasm for living um, and your philosophical understanding of what your life is because you have a flexible life perspective that somehow I have to account for it and I have to pay a price for it? Well, fuck that. I'm, you know, this is bullshit. I mean, everybody's going to sit there and say to the elephant man, well, you're just depressed because you're ugly and disgusting and your life sucks. Yeah, you're just depressed. Take this pill, fucker. You'll be okay. 
I'm sure he will be. That elephant man was. After we pumped him full of enough drugs, he was fine. Many different circumstances in people's lives. And say for somebody who's enjoyed their life, they've accomplished much, they've decided to have children, which I don't agree with. And there's an event in their life that throws them into <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is the irony here, right? People have the right... To, 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 you're not suggesting... Um, that we should psychoanalyze people before they're allowed to have children, and that we should do it from maybe Gary's perspective, right? That we should take the most negative, most cautious perspective and analyze people's choices to have children, right? So let's establish the same board we establish to judge people's competence, to say when somebody's too depressed to have the right to kill themselves. Well, let's have the same board in inverse, judge everybody before we give them any right to have any fucking kids. You're right? Yeah. Then that's a fair exchange. If I could get that as a fair exchange, I'll take your policy, okay, of judgment, of social judgment. If we can impose the same judgment on the life producers as the life individual <laughs> takers of their own life, and at least p impose the same standards on the motherfuckers who are imposing life, there, okay, that's a fair exchange. Bargain. Deep, dark depression where they're feeling suicidal, say it's the loss of their spouse due to whatever circumstance, and they have a financial burden, they have the responsibility of children, things like that. I've known people who felt this way. I've read about them. I've watched their stories. All uh, right, and we always, we, every book always has the story of the real case or the bullshit case, right? So for every case where you can go, Oh, and three months later, everything was okay. I can give you the story where three months later, he cut his kids' throats and blew up the house. You shouldn't be able to just quickly throw that away on a whim due to an emotional circumstance. Well, I'm just saying, I want the right to be in control of my life, okay? And I don't want anybody else telling me when I'm having an emotional circumstance. I'll decide emotional circumstance. And what I'll also decide is I don't give a fuck, all right? I'll let you know what sentences I... When I utter a certain sentence, I'll write down the sentence and I'll say, if I ever say that, I'm fucking insane. So if you ever hear me say, I think we ought to populate Mars, then you can put me in the fucking nut house and shoot me through with any drug you can find because I am batshit motherfucking insane. I am crazier than the craziest person has ever been. So when I suggest someday that we should take a... You know, let's, in, let's infect Mars with bacteria, super atomic bacteria that feels... Yeah, if I do that someday, that's the signal. Then I'm fucking insane. If I say, I hate it here, I'm getting the fuck out because I'm sick of this shit. Yeah, well, that's perfectly normal. Thank you very much. I would say many people who have children don't have children while they're depressed and suicidal and they don't make that judgment call. But extenuating circumstances through their life may cause them to feel this way. And I think that those feelings should be challenged. Yeah, well, I think we ought to challenge the feelings of the people having babies because they feel like they want somebody to love them. Maybe we should just challenge any fucker who says, this is how I feel about my life. All right? And maybe we should oblige everybody to say the word, I think. I understand. And if they can't say, I think, and I understand, when they're talking about the meaning of their life, then we say, okay we got to put you at the kitty table because we don't know what the fuck you're going to do. Yeah, I don't think it's so, so high a standard to have to just say if somebody can't say they want to live, then they probably should die. I mean, realistically. Um, this whole idea that they're going to miss out on something, I don't think so. No, they're going to miss out on, you know, probably fucking somebody over, getting drunk and killing somebody on the highway prematurely. That could be the case, but it's not probable. 
that every pe- every person. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of funny, right? Because they brought up that uh, you even said it was about the drunk driver, and I was laughing when I said um, that you, you saw that, right? Let's just play that again. I mean, it's just more manipulation. They they talk like I said it seriously, and I said it funnily. You can hear it. Probably fucking somebody over, getting drunk and killing somebody on the highway prematurely. There, prematurely. I think that's like saying prematurely with air quotes. Yeah, I think that's the same fucking thing. So, yeah, fail again, manipulators, distorters, perverters. That could be the case, but it's not probable that every every person that dies... Uh, is preventing a car accident. Oh, I'm using that as an argument, as an example. Sometimes arguments you're using as examples tend to go towards the extreme because you're making people, you're saying, hey, look, imagine this, all right? This is the way it happens, right? You use the extreme cases. But it doesn't really matter, all right? I mean, we could disagree. You could say if a thousand, if one in a thousand kids are killed on the roller coaster, it's too many. And I could say, well, I think it's one in a hundred. You know, we could have a, we could have an argument about that, and it's sort of, eh, who cares, right? We both agree that there's a number, all right? We both agree. And I'm just going to, I'm going to argue, and as I stated in my video, that I'd rather default on the side of personal autonomy, it's a person's life. Society has no interest in imposing it on somebody unless you think God says so or some other kind of crap. As a philosophical notion, there's no logical statement that can possibly be made, made, in my opinion, that there's any realistic probability that their extra years will be anything different than the stupid years they had previous to that. They will be like the regular average rat. They will chase a fucking Cheeto and accomplish absolutely nothing. And it's really just no point in playing the game. I mean, you're either anti-natalist or you're not. You either think life does something purposeful and functional, or you don't think it does. I don't think life, even under its best circumstances, is anything but a big pile of turd. It's nothing. It's not useful. You can't glue a house together with it. You can't wash your windows with it. It's turd. Okay? And sometimes it's maggot-infested turd, what makes it even more useless committed by themselves, or something like that. Uh, Again, if you want to confine your rights, that's okay with me. If you want to sign a statement saying, please don't trust me, there's times when I'm completely irrational and out of my mind, or I think I might be sometime in my life completely irrational and out of my mind. I want, I want protection against the possibility of possibly being out of my mind. Well, go ahead. Sign that statement. Give away your rights. I'm, I want to keep my fucking rights. I know I'm, I'm more competent to decide what my life means than any one of these fuckers on this planet. Out of the 7 billion people, I win. Okay? I want my vote to count. All right? And as the circumstance exists now, my vote doesn't count at all. And that's just fucking bullshit. So I shouldn't have to even bother with an argument that even implies some sort of concern or worry as we have defaulted so far on the wrong side of this fence. We could also argue that maybe uh, a premature death could be preventing something really good from happening. Maybe that person was on the... Uh... Yes, I don't know why you're an anti-natalist. Did you think, on balance, that the average depressive person should be prevented from, st- from committing suicide because the majority of those depressive people are some substantial number, a number worth dragging the others along, forcing them into some more forced servitude, um, is worth it. And I'm saying bullshit. I, I want, I'm going to advocate for the, the victims... Who, who should have the fucking right to get the hell out of here and shouldn't have to spend another five minutes marching in a fucking parade they had no interest in signing up for. They never signed up for. So yeah, I'm going to default with the people who want the fuck out and I'm not going to default with let's make them jump through some more hoops. Uh, was, yeah, taking care of others. Maybe that person wanted to achieve something uh, important for the rest of... Uh, his peers. I wouldn't even say the whole human race, because there are really few. And, and you do, you guys really don't think you're being rather 
inarticulate and uh, mushy on this subject. That you're not just kind of making a mess of it. You know, with this, sit there defending some preposterous proposition that there really is something horribly valuable. That it would somehow matter if the whole fucking planet blew up tomorrow that there would be really something to grieve about. Hmm? I don't think so. Casey Stack, that one. But I would argue that uh, I can at least now think about five people, five persons, right off the top of my head, uh, that died prematurely, that I wish they wouldn't have died so early. Um, so these were people who were... Well, I'm going to run out of time. The memory's almost up. So part two some other time. Uh, he said, like, yeah, you know, long video. Um, and, yeah, no, whatever. Hard feelings is okay with me. Either way, I really just don't give a...